from the Palace of Fine Arts in San Francisco, it's theCUBE, covering AT&T Spark. Now, here's Jeff Frick. Hey, welcome back everybody. Jeff Frick here with theCUBE. We're at the Palace of Fine Arts in San Francisco at the AT&T Spark event. It's all about 5G. 5G is this huge revolution. I haven't got a definitive number, but it's something on the order of 100X improvement of speed and data throughput. There's a lot of excitement, but one of the things that it's less talked about here, but it was, it was actually up on the keynote, was really the role of open source. And AT&T talked a lot about open source and how important that it is in really def redefining the company around the speed of software development versus the speed of hardware development, and that's a big piece of it. We're excited to have somebody who knows all about open source. Our next guest, he's Jeff McCaffer. He's the Director of Open Source Progress Officer at Microsoft. Did I get that right, Jeff? No, well, it's the uh, Open Source Programs Officer. Programs Officer, yeah. so you're all about open source. So yeah. first off, welcome. Thank you very much, Jeff, it's good and, to be here. And uh, so Microsoft, you know, no one would have ever thought, I mean, <laughs> you know, I'm probably dating myself 15 years ago, yeah. that, that Microsoft would be a big component of open source. Yeah. But in fact, they're a huge proponent of open source. Absolutely, even just not so long ago, you know, it was, it was not the, the foremost in everybody's mind that Microsoft would be doing open source, but now it's it's a core part of our company. It's a core part of how, how we work and our engagement with the rest of the industry. So it's really growing and it's continuing to grow. So how did it kind of get there and what are some of the real key components that you have to worry about in, in your role in terms right. of managing, right. you know, participating in all these various communities all over the yeah, place? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, it's been a long road, but it, it's really the way software is happening today, you mentioned in the intro about the, the speed of software versus hardware, and software just going so fast, and it, you know, it, you can aspire to be world class, but when everybody else starts there with open source, you, you know, it's really hard to start from zero and get to there. Uh, so we're really happy to be you know, using open source and contributing. One of the real challenges we've had going forward is the scale. Like the, simply, we've got literally millions of uses of open source across all of our products and services, and managing that, keeping track of it, engaging with those, all those communities and everything is, is a real big challenge. So, uh, so we've been building policies and tools and changing the culture to understand that you, you need to engage, uh, push fixes back, all those sorts of things. And then when we look at, at our releasing our software, we have thousands of open source repositories on GitHub, uh, thousands of developers at Microsoft working on GitHub repositories, our own and others in the community. Uh, so it's just managing all of that as being a really big challenge. Right, and it's interesting because the, the open source projects themselves, you, you've seen it time and time again, you know, they fork, and they go, yeah. they go a lot of different directions. There's sometimes disagreement about direction sure. and, and prioritization. So you've got to kind of manage that within the open source thread, but as well as within you know, where those products play a role in your products. Right, right, and we've taken a sort of federated model in the company, we're very diverse as you know, right? And, and so uh, my team sort of helps put uh, guidelines in place for, for project teams to run, and then those project teams run their own program, How they engage with open source however they want to, and sort of at the level they want to, that matches their business requirements. Uh, you know, so it ranges everywhere from people who are fully open source, uh, to folks who are just you know using a little bit of stuff here and there within their products. Right, I wonder if you could speak a little to open source and the role that it plays in employee happiness, employee mm. retention, because right. you know, there's so <clears throat> much um, goodness, and you see it at these shows, where Absolutely. there's particular contributors that, you know, they're, they're rock stars in their community. They've made super important contributions, yeah. they've, they've managed the community, and I always think back, if you're the person managing that, that, that person back at the office, you know, how much time do they put into their open source sure. efforts? How much time do they put in their company efforts? How much other time is, is really the company software that's built on top of that open source? Yeah. And how do you manage that? Because it is a really important piece Absolutely. for a lot of people's personas and, yeah. and their self-value. Yeah. Well, and there's been a lot of research that says also that high-performing teams, one of the traits of, of high-performing teams is engaging in open source. And at the personal level, if individuals, uh, there's kind of a different set of, of uh, possibilities there. You know, either you're engaging in open source for part of your product work, right, so that's sponsored by the company, or you might be doing some things on the side or some tangential range in between there, right? right. Uh, and sort of all of those you need to drive to the appropriate level. The, the folks who are working on it day to day for, their, for the company, uh, there's some really interesting dynamics that can get set up, uh, super exciting for the team. Sometimes it can get a little waylaid maybe, but right, you know, right. you want to keep them, keep them on task. Uh, but then also the, uh, the folks who are doing it of their own volition, like on their own time and that sort of thing, that also brings back a bunch of energy and, and everything into the workplace. 
place, new, new technologies that they'll discover in their area, and they'll bring back the energy and the excitement about engaging uh, back to the regular team. Right. So there's lots of possibilities there. So what brings you here? What brings you to AT&T Spark today? Well, they invited me to speak on a panel earlier today about open source and the future of open source, and uh, so I had a, there were a couple of other people uh, from Linux Foundation and from AT&T, uh, so we had a good conversation on stage. Yeah, it's pretty interesting how all, pretty much all these projects, you know, eventually get put into the Linux Foundation. That they, <laughs> you know, they've just kind of become this de facto steward for a, uh, a wide variety of, of open source projects. Yeah, well, there's a number of different foundations. Linux Foundation is certainly one of the better known ones. The Eclipse Foundation, Apache, right, been Apache, around lots right. of times, doing lots of good things. Uh, so th there's a ton of amazing projects out there in all of these foundations, uh, and it's, it's just super exciting to see them all be engaging. Like, in this sort of cohesive way, right? And, and with right. a good governance model. Right. Yeah. So give you the last word, one of my favorite lines always is open source, is, is open source is free like a puppy. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's totally free like so, a puppy. You know, so yeah. you, you know, you live it in that world, you know, what, what, is, what is one of the things about open source that most people miss, one of the really positive attributes that most people just don't see? And then what's one of the, bi you know, your kind of biggest kind of ongoing challenges that's just part of operating? in this open source world? Well, I mean, I phrase it in challenges and opportunities, right? There are obviously lots of challenges, like I was saying, with scale and, and managing security and the culture change that goes around collaboration and that sort of thing. The opportunities, I think, are boundless, really. I mean, it, there's the, one of the most gratifying things that you can see as an open source project is we people take your technology and use it in ways you never imagined. Right, so there's, we, we can think of that as our products too. When we take our products, and they've got open source APIs, they've got open source uh, frameworks and such, and people take them and do amazing things with them that we never imagined possible. And that just that, that part is really exciting and, yeah. and, and invigorating. All right, Jeff, well, uh, thanks for taking a few minutes. Congrats sure. on all your work, and I guess we'll see you in Orlando in a month or so. Uh, quite possibly. <laughs> all right, <laughs> thanks. he's Jeff, I'm Jeff. All Jeff's here, we're at the Palace <laughs> Fine Arts at AT&T Spark. Thanks for watching, see you next time.